Coming up on today's episode of Airborne. The return of U.S. astronauts flying in U.S. spacecraft is coming closer. The flying physicians are on board for third-class medical changes. And the Martin jetpack could be on the way. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Commercial Space Flight Federation congratulates NASA and the winners of the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability Contract Awards announced yesterday. CCT CAP is the latest round in NASA's Commercial Crew Program that will develop domestic space transportation capabilities for NASA astronauts. Boeing and SpaceX were awarded fixed-price contracts totaling $6.8 billion to complete development, certify, and launch their vehicles to include one crewed demo flight to the International Space Station. The award of these contracts is a giant step forward to returning NASA's capability of placing U.S. astronauts in a low-Earth orbit for missions to the International Space Station. As the relationship between the United States and Russia grows more tenuous, this is the right step at the right time. We're looking forward to seeing U.S. astronauts lofted into space in a made-in-America spaceship. We recently reported that 11 U.S. senators had submitted a letter to the DOT urging action on revised third-class medical requirements. And now the Flying Physicians Association, known as the FPA, have added their letter to the same stack. The FPA's letter to U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox called for the DOT and Office of Management and Budget to complete their review of the FAA's third-class medical NPRM in the next 30 days. In the letter, Richard W. Sloan, MD, RPH, president of the FPA and senior aviation medical examiner, said that, quote, Many doctors who fly agree that the third-class medical is adding a burden with very little benefit, end quote. The letter goes on to address the issue that pilots working with their own personal physician have a better awareness of a pilot's medical condition than is provided by a cursory third-class medical examination performed by a physician that does not have a medical history for the pilot. The sum of the letter is that the FPA supports the movement to modify the requirements for a third-class medical certificate for private pilots. We can only hope that the stack of supportive letters for third-class medical reform will finally bring the DOT and FAA to take appropriate action. After the break, Tom Patton will update us on the status of the Martin Jetpack. You're watching Airborne. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Could we finally be on the verge of getting the long-promised jetpack? Tom Patton reports that it may be just a bit closer. Ashley, this time it's not a technology breakthrough, but a financial one that may make the jetpack a little closer to reality. New Zealand-based Martin Aircraft Company, which is developing what it calls the world's first practical and commercial flying jetpack, closed their pre-IPO fundraising round one week ahead of schedule and with about 1.23 million U.S. dollars of oversubscriptions. The company says the next step may be an initial public offering, or IPO, taking the company public. The company says it's seeing a lot of interest around the world in the device, which uses ducted fan technology powered by a two-stroke V4 engine that Martin says produces 200 horsepower to provide its lift. The company says it's now raised about the equivalent of $5.3 million from 125 investors for the jetpack. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. We at Aero TV have produced around 2,000 Aero TV programs, so sometimes it's fun to look back and reminisce at some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
I am very proud of what uh, EAA gave us here and uh, that is due to the fact that we have so many builders. So it's the builders I want to thank. At EAA Air Venture 2011, Zenith Aircraft founder and aircraft designer Chris Heinz was honored. And he was back again in 2014 to participate in the One Week Wonder Project. This video from 2011 will help you get to know this great guy just a little better. Search Chris Heinz honored at Oshkosh on Aero TV's news channel. EASA has granted full certification to Bombardier for the Learjet 70 and Learjet 75, clearing the way for European deliveries to begin. The aircraft have enhanced performance through an engine thrust increased with an improved Honeywell engine, offering improved takeoff field length performance over their predecessors. The new avionics system contributes to achieving weight savings and the new canted winglets improve aerodynamic efficiency. Overall, both aircraft provide up to a 9% improvement in field performance under hot and high conditions, and up to a 4% improvement in fuel efficiency. Both aircraft employ the Bombardier Vision Flight Deck, which features the fully integrated Garmin G5000 digital avionics suite. After these messages, Airbus celebrates 20 years of the Beluga. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Ben King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The flying whales are still going strong after 20 years, and they're busier than ever. The Beluga cargo aircraft, affectionately named after the white whale because of its remarkable shape, is celebrating 20 years of transporting Airbus component parts between Airbus European manufacturing sites. Since 1995, the fleets of the Beluga aircraft have been supplying the Airbus final assembly lines in Toulouse and Hamburg. Today, more than 60 flights are performed each week between 11 sites, carrying crucial parts for all of the Airbus programs, including the vertical tailplane and tail cone for the A380. The Beluga is based on the twin-engine A300-600R and can carry a maximum payload of over 103,000 pounds, non-stop over a range of 900 nautical miles. The U.S. Navy elite parachute team, the Leapfrogs, had been scheduled to skydive over M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore prior to the Ravens-Steelers game last Thursday, which was the anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks on the United States. But on game day, it was reported the team was informed by CBS Sports that they would not be allowed to make the jump. The report indicated CBS cited safety as the reason for canceling the performance. They had installed a camera system suspended on cables over the field for the broadcast, and they said in a statement that they had serious safety concerns given the wiring and cabling in the stadium. A LeapFrog spokesman was quoted as saying, quote, For the record, the stadium did look like a particularly tricky jump, but I'm sure we could have done it, end quote. The LeapFrogs, however, did participate in other Fleet Week activities in Baltimore over the weekend. Well, that's our program for September 17th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online, and you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And be advised, there are some huge upgrades and changes coming soon to Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching. <laughs>